good morning. It is Thursday, October 29th, 2020, and boy, do I have an update for you. Um, first and foremost, this is actually chemo day. I lost one BC, which I'm quite sad I can get emotional about, but I'm <laughs> trying to keep it together. Um, actually, Okay, so let's just back up. Yesterday was uh, one of those days that was like, um, like so strangely complicated and hard and shitty and emotional. Um, and I don't know that I've had any like feelings of, you know, sort of like a meltdown of like, I like, I'm kind of like giving up kind of like feelings um I've cried because I'm sad I've cried because um I'm worried uh you know I've cried because um of, of actually gratitude I've cried for a lot of different reasons but I feel like yesterday was the first time I cried because I was like I feel like, okay, this clearly, um, someone has it in for me or <laughs> the universe has it in for me. Like this, they're not, it's not, none of this is going to be made easy for me. Um, and not that I owe, like I'm owed anything to be easy. It's just, you know, like if it's a, <laughs> if there's going to be like a, a shitty thing, if, um, I don't know. Like maybe it's sort of like an entitled kind of a perspective, but I'm just sort of like, hey, like if you're gonna, um, you know, deliver me a pile of shit, like maybe you can deliver it in a, on a nice plate and have it smell nice or something. I don't know. Anyway, I had one of these moments, a few moments of those like yesterday. So I had the um, oncology appointment where my expectation was I was going to go in, going to get blood drawn. They were going to tell me that my bilirubin number was lower. Um, but there was a part of me that's like, regardless of how low or how not low it is, that they were going to uh, recommend that I start chemo this week. I It was just a feeling. It wasn't going to um, be delayed anymore. So I was prepared for that. And my prep what I was prepared for and my, what my expectation was, was that it was going to start on Friday. Um, and I also, <clears throat> based on, <clears throat> excuse me, previous um, experiences, was that I was going to be, like, it was going to be like a three-hour thing from the time that I went in for the blood draw and that I would le be leaving the clinic. Um, and none of that really happened. Um, so it ended up being more like four and a half hours. Um, got there at 8.30, left at like one, something like that. Uh, 9, 10, 11, 12, yeah, like four and a half hours. Um, so it was longer than I was anticipating. And it's, a, it's, it's sort of, um, an intense thing to be going through, <laughs> um, for that amount of time. I, I mean, mind you, a lot of that's waiting. Um, and I had a lot of questions, um, so anyway, it was a long time and, um, the big thing that I found out was that, um, they want to start chemo for me this week, which I knew and I anticipated, but I didn't realize <clears throat> that it was going to be today for today, which is Thursday, because up until now I've been told that chemo, uh, chemo days are on Friday. Chemo days are on Friday. So my assumption was that it was going to start on Friday. But apparently they are uh, full. Um, and uh, the, the chemo daycare clinic, I guess they call it, was full. And they actually wanted to not start me until next week. But the oncology team um, really wants me to start this week. And I feel it's, it's important. Um, just based on some of the things that I've been feeling the last what, little while. I think I talked about sort of the pressure in my, my midsection and things like that. Um, in addition, some heartburn, um, digestive, some digestive stuff um, that I've been, that's been slowly um, 
worsening or just getting more intense over time and uh, so um, letting them know about these symptoms they feel like it's best if I start sooner rather than later so number one um, it was a day earlier so I feel like I've now missed out on 1 BC because uh, I was I had this plan where I was gonna have a couple conversations today I was gonna putter around and get some things done and get ready for Friday and now um, I, I don't have that time so um, I just have a couple of hours this morning maybe to get my crap together and because um, it's going to be apparently five hours the first time around it takes a little bit longer because they don't want to administer the chemotherapy drugs as quickly as they might like once they figure out how my body tolerates it so it's going to be on top of everything else I'm going to be there for probably about five hours so that is uh, getting stuff administered I guess I guess I'll tell you more about that like once it's happening or once it's happened but this is my my uh, BC video like one BC video I guess um, because everything else after it's gonna be after chemo it's gonna be AC so that was number one I learned that I am going to start chemo a day early and that almost brought me to tears during the oncology appointment, but uh, that was fine. I had a whole load of questions. And I think that when the sort of the reality of uh, chemo started setting in and what that was going to mean and these side effects and all this kind of stuff, I just had a lot of questions. Um, and because I am a firm believer in just being able to do whatever that's possible maybe sometimes things aren't possible to try to mitigate or to try to support in some way but if there if there are ways in which i can try to make the experience a little less difficult i'm going to try to do those things um and as you may as i may have talked about in the videos two of the things that i am quite worried there's a few things i'm worried about but there's a couple of things that i'm specifically worried about one is uh, neuropathy. Actually, it's three, I guess. Now I'm, you know, I'm beginning to sort of tease this stuff out. What is neuropathy, which is uh, tingling and numbness in the extremities? Like so, whether it's my hands or my feet, both. My understanding, um, just not being able to feel things, um, and uh, I think that is in relation to, um, and I'm going to mispronounce this, um, a the chemotherapy drug called oxyplatin, ox. Oxyloplatin, I think it's called. I was corrected by my oncologist yesterday. You know, I don't pronounce stuff right, but she didn't pronounce my name right, so um, yesterday. So tit for tat, I guess. Um, yes. Yeah, so, um, but I, I want to just say too, though, I, I really, um, I, I have a I have a great deal of trust and gratitude for my oncologist. So I just want to mention that, but. Um, so, um, so this particular drug, this platinum drug, they call it, called ox oxipla oxidoplatin, butchering it, sorry, um, does have side effects where there's cold sensitivity um, to like touch, um, and I think feeling of cold, which is crappy for me because I love feeling cold. Like it's, it's my my preferred state is to be cold, and if I'm too cold, then I can put stuff on. Whereas like I find that if I'm too hot. There's no, it's, it's difficult to cool me down, um, like without having some kind of air conditioning or something like that. So my preferred, so so up until this point in my life, my preferred kind of temporal temperature has been on the cold side. Now I'm being told that I'm going to have such sensitivity to it that it's that it's going to be uncomfortable, like almost painful, and to, and to some degree like painful. So she's saying that um, I was told that if you know after the treatment like two or three days after, if I were to stick my hand in the freezer, it is going to hurt. So that's the cold sensitivity. And then I guess a neuropathy. Wait, so that, those are the, those are the things that get kind of confused. So there's a, there's a cold sensitivity. Then eventually there's going to be numbness. That's the neuropathy in the hands and the feet and maybe 
yeah, those kinds of sensations, um, which means that I'm not going to be able to do up my buttons or I'm not going to be able to do like finer kind of like motor things um, because I just can't, I don't have feelings in, in my hands and my feet. Um, which they want to be able to reduce as much as possible because clearly that impacts quality of life. So there's cold sensitivity, there's neuropathy that can happen with oxaliplatin, and there is the mouth sores and the cold sensitivity in the mouth. Again, two different things. But my understanding is that, so just from some readings that I've been doing, there have there was one small study, and I guess it's a small study, but nonetheless, and then there are also people who talk about their experiences online who have taken oxaliplatin and have done cold exposure while they're getting tr the, the treatment, and it seemed to have reduced their sensitivity to cold. Now, we don't know whether or not that impacts neuropathy at all, so whether the, the numbness um, that comes um, as there's more um, treatments that are done. But in terms of the cold sensitivity, and apparently the cold exposure during the treatment itself actually helps with the cold sensitivity. That's what I read up on. Um, I didn't print it out or anything like that. I thought that just based on what I was reading online, that it seemed to be sort of like a thing that a lot of cancer um, tr the centers do um, for folks who are taking different kinds of chemotherapy. And so, so when I brought it to the oncology appointment yesterday, I said, "So I'm think you know I really want to have an understanding of what could be like preventative or help to minimize some of these side effects." And I was just kind of given like, "Well, you know." Not really a whole lot is pretty much what I've been told. And I said, well, I've been reading this thing about cold exposure. And the oncologist sort of stopped me and said, well, you know, they, they, they do know that that works for breast cancer um, when there's like cold caps for um, hair you know, to, to be able to minimize hair loss. But it hasn't been shown for any of the drugs that you'll be taking. And it just didn't ring right with me. Um, I've been reading a lot of stuff and thinking about a lot of things. Clearly, whether it's about this chemotherapy and how it, you know, and how I'm gonna go through it and like how my feelings about it, but and all kinds of other things about life, you know. So I, so I have an expert whom I trust telling me it's like no, I don't know of anything. Um, doesn't make any sense. And I'm like, oh, okay. But again, like I'm just sitting there going like, mm, doesn't, I don't, um, like it doesn't sort of jive with what I feel like I read. But I, I wasn't able to go, this is the study and this is this and this is that. So um, I was kind of like, okay, um, so it's not being recommended. So I was feeling like I was given like one really, like so I need to start chemo the next day and all these things that sort of I was planning up to this point around uh, cold exposure during my, during my chemotherapy to be able to minimize some of these side effects, I was being told that it's, it's essentially bullshit. So I was feeling like, oh God, like I, I'm just completely, I, feel, I felt like I was completely helpless. Like I'm just walking into this minefield and I'm, it's, it's inevitable that I'm going to hit mines. And that was a shitty, that was a super shitty feeling. And on top of that, for whatever reason, um, again, like I, you know, really, um, it's, it's an interesting thing. Like I was like, oh, um, I want to say that I love my on oncologist, but yesterday's experience was a bit tough for me. Um, so I'm, I'm feeling some reservations. Like I'm very grateful and I believe that she, um, uh, she's she's good at what she does and she's on my side and um, I'm you know that's 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 a lot in this kind of a situation but a few things I guess happened yesterday with that thing with the, the cold exposure and also um, she so my name is Mio Yokoi and um, I guess like you know because like Yoko is maybe a um, 
a pretty um like well yoko ono right um is a um more um common japanese name than mio um I guess some people like well like their brain will gravitate toward the thing. I don't know. I can't. I can't assume that. But anyway, she called. She came in and she kept calling me Yokoi or Yoko. Yoko. It's funny. Like and but she would say it really quickly and she said it like three or four times. And I was like, oh, um, I know that you know about my case but my name isn't my name is Mio right and there was something about that that was kind of off-putting for me that like she's like I realized that she sees so many different people and there's so many different details that she has to deal with and not just patients but you know her the the fellows that she works with and this and that and everything else there's so many different details that she has to hold I mean probably my name is sort of the last and all of that right but there is something about not being called your name that that feels like oh like i don't i don't that doesn't feel good about that especially when it comes to somebody who is trying to help you prolong your life right i mean it's it's one thing if like somebody at a restaurant you have reservations and they don't call your name right but it's another thing when your oncologist um is like not doesn't seem to know your name so so that kind of left like a weird um, not as solid feeling for me with her yesterday, I think. And especially, and then like, like I mentioned on top of that, like the whole thing with the cold exposure stuff. But, um, so again, uh, and, and the other thing that I actually asked about just because I had a conversation with a friend about it is, um, just having uh, a second opinion conversation with somebody based on my diagnosis. Um, if, I mean, it just, it just feels like this is sort of the standard treatment and and I don't feel one way or another about it but um I guess when I was talking about the uh, the side effects of my um my worries about them uh my friend was like well, you know have you thought about getting a second opinion and I had like mm, I had like as an idea but not like really in terms of like actually doing it and not because I I want to I don't want to um offend um or don't believe in the tr in the treatment plan that's been you know it's been given to me or whatever it's just i i think also it's it's you know like good to get a, another opinion and um whatever that person might say like it's it's possible that i can just glean some excuse me some kind of um insight from a conversation with them i think that, that might be interesting so I asked about that and they're actually um, going to hook me up with somebody at Sunnybrook because they also have a cancer center over there um, just to have I guess a conversation about um, just my um, just my diagnosis and potential treatment plan um, and she was just saying like you know uh, I, I feel like um, I'm not asking for the second opinion because I don't believe in what's happening um, or I don't trust in the treatment plan that I have it's just it was a it was a question that was posed to me it's been in my brain and I just want to be able to resolve this question and that's it so um, there was a little bit of like conversation and weirdness about um, you know I don't take it like she was saying I don't take it personally if that's what you want to do and blah 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 and I'm like yeah you know that's true and and I can I can understand that people don't take things like that personally, like especially doctors, and also as somebody who worked as a therapist, I understand um, not taking things personally on a different kind of a level, right? But um, I think just all of these things um, was just like not as connective in my um, appointment experiences that I've had previously so it was a bit jarring so um, so there was that so that was the appointment it's gonna start tomorrow or today as it turns out um, I didn't feel particularly um, like I was told like what to expect from the different chemotherapy drugs but I wasn't really told um, about like what I should do like what should I be wearing like what can I be bringing what am I taking snacks like what's going on here or 
none no, of that. So I asked some of those questions like, yeah, yeah, you can bring food. There's a microwave, but you know, you might not want to microwave something that's smelly and that kind of thing. Um, but like without me asking, um, I wasn't sure what I can, you know, what, what, what it all look like. Like, you know, for all I know, I could have just like shown up with my smartphone or whatever. And, um, and I'm apparently just sitting there for five hours. Right. Um, I guess I get a chair and, um, I get uh, um, a color or a chair and then kind of given a place to sit and that's how they administer the the, uh, um, the chemotherapy so that um, so I left I left that appointment just feeling like oh it's crappy it's not what I wanted and it's not I thought I had another day and if this is a, that's the thing that really for some reason gets me really emotional I just thought I had another day just thought I had another day um, but the but the plan that Joe and I had after the hospital was for me to go and get my health card renewed because um, with COVID right now um, even the even though you may have um, an expired health card they it has been extended uh, indefinitely but it's possible that at any given time they can say it probably isn't going to be some sometime soon but even that even the next year or something like that they can say okay like if you have an expired health card it's time to to renew it um, it turns out that I don't have a driver's license um, so I can't renew online I had to go into a service Ontario and I think I mentioned that yesterday so um, so that was my plan to do that and I sort of gathered all the stuff that I thought that I needed went to a um, service Ontario location that didn't have like too many people waiting um, so I presented all the stuff that I thought that I needed um, but um, the clerk was like note this um, we need uh, this verification of address and I said well I have all these pieces of mail with a date on it that was sent recently with my name on it and this is from a hospital this is from another hospital this is from uh, GST or something like that and she's like no none of these count and and she's like so we can't do this you can get an Ontario photo card it's gonna take 12 weeks and then once it's a 12 weeks, um, you can come back and do that. And I was like, and I just started crying. I was like, all I want to do is renew this health card. And I want to renew this health card before I start chemo, before I become a immunocompromised, and that I have less of an ability to be able to even like walk into a place like this without like, I don't know, like feeling completely tired out or something. I just... I just want to do this thing and you know the only thing that's stopping me from doing it is that like you need like a water bill which I don't get yeah and there's other things on that on that list but I mean like I brought like three or four pieces of of mail that show my address on it and with a date I mean I don't you know but I guess rules are rules and she's like no nope, I can't help you but the main office is up the street Blur and Islington, and they might be able to do something for you. And she gave me a piece of paper with the address on it. I was still crying. Um, some bit of a meltdown. And I, can, I come out from the Service Ontario location, like Joe's waiting for me. He's like, what happened? And I'm like, they won't do it for me. They're saying that I don't have the right pieces of mail to be able to verify that this is where I live. I'm like, and, and she's like, she, and she gave me a different place up the street that might be able to help me, but I don't, I don't know if I can take somebody else saying that it's not possible to do something. And this stupid thing, the stupid health card, you know, it's not a stupid thing. It's, 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 it's good to have. Um, but the bureaucracy of it is stupid. Um, and so I, um, so I um, was like, I let's just let's, let's just go home. Like I'm done. Like I'm exhausted, and I, I don't know if I can take another place telling me that it's not possible to do something. And 
all this stuff. So Joe was just kind of like, you know what? It's just up the street. We could just go. We could just look in. If there isn't anybody there, like maybe it'll just be quick. It won't, you know? If And if you don't feel like it, if you look in, you don't feel like it, you don't have to do it. So, um, you know, it turns out it was like, you know, like a five minute drive. So we went, looked into the place and there was like one person that was leaving. So there was literally no one there. And um, they were able to help me. <laughs> Long story short, this, so I, and I also had to take a picture for this health card. It is going to be um, a wreck of a picture because I had just been bawling for probably an hour prior to taking this health card picture. So yeah, it's going to be a great picture, but it's done. I got it renewed. Um, and so I'm, I'm thankful for that. And I'm thankful to Joe for just it's kind of sticking with me to get to getting it done because I do feel good about getting it done. In the meantime, the other thing that I forgot to mention when I was um, in the oncology appointment is that they gave me a list of medications that I needed to get to help me manage um, the side effects of chemotherapy, like nausea, vomiting, uh, mouth sores, right? Um, and it's like, and it's literally. Um, the the prescription page is like the, the prescriptions are like it's three pages. It's not like one line item after another. They have like the 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 name of the drug and what it does and when you should take it. And it's like has a description, but it's three pages of drugs to get. And I'm looking at this stuff and I'm thinking like, is this covered under treatments? Like how does this work? I have to take this down in the pharmacy get all these drugs and they're just going to hand it to me? Like, is this how it's going to work? And the the nurse is like, she's apparently been working there for five years. She's like, yeah, I think that's how it works. I think it's covered. And I'm like, so just for me to get it straight, if I don't have a drug plan, um, like they'll just hand me these drugs like I don't have to pay out of pocket and she's like yeah I think that's that's how it works I think it's included mm -hmm. it's weird and she's like you know I've never been asked that question before and I'm like five years of like working here and you've never been asked it's like wow that's kind of crazy um so um so and she's like well let me check with somebody so she goes and comes back and she's like yeah like we think it's covered she's like and if you know how you have a problem you can call up and we'll kind of try to sort it out for you and I'm like okay the thing is I do have some private coverage um, it's it's okay um, and it's just been because um, I've had a history of hypertension um, which started with my I, I believe that it's an hereditary like it's it, for my dad um, and so as a result of that, I've just had this, you know, private coverage, even though I've been self-employed, but now that I, um, I'm not getting, um, regular income, if I can help it, I would like to not have it because it is a, it's a pretty, um, it's an expense and also it doesn't cover like a hundred percent of things. So... Um, and I, and I'm thinking like with all of these new medications that are coming, like even if it's like 70% of it's covered, I have no idea, you know, how much else like it's going to be out of pocket. So, um, the, the, the conversation that I was actually having with the social worker was, um, is there a way for me to be able to get, you know, this stuff covered, um, completely or, you know, because if I had an income, if I had a regular income, I think that's one thing because I don't know like indefinitely like how long, you know, I'm going to have to um, get these medications. Like every time I have chemo, I have to get like the set of medication and um, I don't know how long that's going to go on for. And I also don't know what medications I'm going to need later on. And um, anyway, like so I my um the conversation that i had with the social worker a few weeks ago was that um based on the fact that i am having nursing care that they have a drug card that can cover a hundred percent 
of these kinds of things as long as it's connected to the services that the nursing uh, clinic is providing me with. At least I'm getting a lot of information from a lot of different places so I get unclear about it. But anyway, the nursing clinic or the nursing um, service has that ability to approve a drug pr program. So I've been trying to get in touch with the case manager and it's just been this back and forth and just hadn't been able to connect with her. I think what helped was for me to actually email the social worker, the oncology social worker at PMH, Princess Margaret Hospital, and say, I just can't seem to get in touch with Marianne. Can you help me? And so now all of a sudden Marianne is calling me. So <laughs> leaving... So I get this prescription at the hospital, back at the hospital, um, which I forgot to mention earlier. I get this prescription. I take it down to the pharmacy and they're like, well, how are you going to pay for it? And I said, my understanding, I was just talking to the people in the uh, GI oncology. They were saying it's supposed to be covered. They're like, mm, it'd be covered if you have a drug plan. I said, okay, well, I don't have my drug plan information here. I'd like to get this um, prescription filled can you start because I understand that it's about two and a half hours wait to do that anyway and I can go get my information and then come back is that possible they're like well you're gonna, you might have to wait while we're processing your thing and I'm like it's fine I would rather just get this started not wait two and a half hours later on but to get the two and a half hours done now and wait a half hour as you like process the the insurance please you know do that but in the meantime I'm also trying to get in touch with Marianne um, and the, the case manager to see whether or not it's possible to get this stuff covered by their drug plan. So I'm on the phone doing back and forth and I finally got in touch with Marianne and she was lovely. She um, said, it's like, yep, the drug plan's been approved, sent that approval over to the pharmacy. So, um, there, you know, that because all this stuff is related to how, you know, the things that we're treating you with and, um, and, the clinic that you've been going to, the nursing clinic that you've been going to so far at Women's College, they're not open on the weekends. So we're going to have to move you because um, your infuser pump uh, for the chemotherapy has to be removed on the weekend. I'm like, yep, I understand that. I understand there's one on Sherburn. Is that a possibility? And uh, she said yes. And so that, um, that got done. So that felt good. I'm like, okay, another check. But all this is just happening, you know, um, I was like almost like concurrently, like at the same time, and it was just a lot to deal with yesterday. And I think by the time I got sort of the prescription stuff like dealt with, um, or the the drug plan coverage stuff dealt dealt with, I was at least in a place where I was just like, okay, like some things are making sense. I was able to get the the health card, so I'm no longer frustrated about that. Um, you know, talk to. A good friend about all of this and how I was feeling kind of crappy about it um, and that helped and um, went and picked up all the drugs all the drugs later on I'm going to kind of take a picture or show you like all the drugs that I have now that I have to kind of keep um, yeah keep track of and take and all this kind of stuff and this morning I have like a ton that I have to take before chemo and stuff so, um, yeah, so there's all that that's happening. And by the end of the day, I, you know, I felt um, better about things. And I was given some, like, digestive enzymes. So I'm like, okay, last supper. Can we? <laughs> um, so um, we, um, I had Joe drive me to one of my favorite um, Vietnamese restaurants um, on College Street called The Phoenix. Because they have the best fresh rolls I believe in the city they're delicious they're delicious and I haven't had it in a very very long time so um and uh and as all of that's happening because of course this is like how life works as all that is happening I also get this uh, notification this uh, paypal notification um with another generous amount that someone um that um, I know had sent over. I haven't um, really had an opportunity to really connect with him in the last uh, 
little while. Um, but uh, there was a time when um, there was more um, time that um, and, and conversations that um, we had had, both Joe and I and and, and him, um, and um, just amidst all this craziness, um, again, like just a reminder that there are people who care. When I was like feeling just com kind of completely like um, sort of like just down for the count, you know, yesterday there was there were these moments when I was feeling like I'm done, like I can't, you know, let, let me just go and you know ball up in a uh, ball up somewhere in the corner and like just wait for this chemo thing to happen tomorrow. But um, yeah, I feel like you know I made made it through, and on top of that. Um, that reminder again of how people how people love and care for us, um, and 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 with so much generosity that, that people have, um, it's just been it's it's mind blowing. It's incredible. It's also hard. I mean, you know, one of the things I'm an only child. My parents left to go back to Japan when I was in my, uh, probably my mid-twenties. So I've been pretty much on my own. And I've also been sort of a latchkey kid growing up. I don't know, like, if you're familiar with that term. But, like, when we were growing up in the 80s, like, both my parents worked. And I um, would come home by myself and just would sort of take care of myself, you know. And my parents worked in restaurants. So they wouldn't come home until pretty late. I wouldn't sometimes see my parents properly for days on end because of their because of their schedule like especially after a certain age I think probably about 11 or 12 or something like that so I've been self-sufficient for a very long time I've, I've known how to take care of myself I've prided my prided myself on kind of like making these decisions and taking care of myself and um, at least like sort of like you know day-to-day -day needs right I haven't taken care of myself in a lot of different ways but in terms of like surviving I've been I've been pretty good at surviving up until this point and to now be in a situation where I'm needing so much help. Um, and um, I'm like, needing it, you know, like there are some time, like I'm, you know, it's a weird place to be, but I'm... Uh, but I'm so incredibly grateful that there, there, that there are people who want to help, you know, because I didn't believe that. <laughs> I, I didn't believe that that would actually, that, that people cared enough to want to help. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's sort of like, uh, it's, it's, it's hard to be able to explain. It's kind of overwhelming and like mind blowing on a lot of different levels. So anyway, this is like, the longest video that I've had up to this date but a lot happened yesterday and I'm just in the process of getting myself ready for my first chemo appointment oh, this fuck. there's one other thing <laughs> um, so I did call back the the hospital yesterday after actually um, looking up that information about um, oxaliplatin and um, cold exposure called back the hospital and I said I don't know how to get in touch with Dr. Alamova but I really want to be able to maybe get this information to her because I'm curious about trying to 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 do this um to to give myself this cold exposure to potentially uh, blunt some of the the cold sensitivity stuff and also the cold sensitivity in my mouth and the mouth sore stuff anyway um and I left that message in the nurse on the nurse line on the nurses line and the doctor actually called me back. Uh, Dr. Alamova actually called me back in person, which I was like really shocked at. And I said, you know, thank you. I don't mean to be disrespectful. This is kind of um, hard for me because I don't want to feel as though I am second guessing you. But this is the information that I came across. And, um, and it is in relation specifically to treatment of or um, treatment of 
oxaloplatin. I think I said oxaloplatin, and she was like oxaloplatin. And I'm like, okay, that's that's fair. I like I said, she had my name wrong, and I corrected her. <laughs> I have oxaloplatin wrong, and she corrected me. Um, it's it's just a funny thing, right? Um, I, I mean, I can get into the whole like psychology of that, but um, but anyway. I um, was able to have a conversation with her about it. She said, like, you know, just bring it in with you tomorrow. Just leave it for me, and I'll take a look on, th on Friday. And, you know, to her you know, to her credit, like, it's a very small study, and, like, nothing in it is, is conclusive. But I also don't see the harm in trying. Like, if I want to drink cold water while I'm getting treatment, like, what's the big deal, you know? Um, so... Anyway, I'm going to bring some cold stuff with me today um, and see like whether or not like any of that can be helpful for me for the next while with like this cold sensitivity and stuff. See how it goes. Boy, 40 minutes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. If you've, if you've um, hung in with me, thank you so much. It's a big day. It's my first chemo treatment, a modified chemo treatment because my bilirubin number isn't still quite low enough. Um, to the satisfaction of like Dr. Alamova to do the full the full strength chemo. Um, in fact, what they're going to do is they're going to step it up over three treatments, which um, I don't know, sounds good to me, I guess. <laughs> um, I'm like, okay, like how do I tolerate it? Because she explained it this way, which I appreciate. Like, so I'm going to step it up over three treatments to see how I tolerate it. And it's also mental, as she said, and it's true. The more that you're able to tolerate something, the more you're like, oh, I can do this. So, um, I get that and I appreciate that. So, um, it's not full strength, it's modified, but it's still my first time and there's still side effects and there, I'm still worried about some things, but okay. I'm feeling a little bit better about things and I, you know, again, like lost a day, but, um, that's, that's how it is. That's how it is. So... You're not seeing this. Um, if you're um, like watching it as I'm watching these videos as I'm releasing them, you're not seeing it real time because this, this video is still a few weeks off, a couple weeks off probably. Excuse me. Hi, Smeo speaking. Hi, is this the Yes, it is. Yep, I did. Yeah, um, can you just let me know which trials you were talking about? And then I can just uh, email you both of them and let her know. I actually spoke to her yesterday. Oh, you did? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah no. Okay, you know, that's good. Yeah, I appreciate it. Yeah, I appreciate I yeah, I appreciate you um following up on it. But yeah, she did give me a call. Thank you so much. Okay. Yes, I do. Okay, great. And I think um, all of the chemo will be kept on Friday. Okay. Uh, and so hopefully that will all work out, okay? Okay, great. Okay, good luck today. We'll see you soon. All right. Thanks again, Tanya. Okay, take care. You too. You're Bye. Bye. Okay, so that was nice. <laughs> um, so that was the nurse um, with the oncology department um who i left a message for um <laughs> regarding that stuff that i was talking about um but the doctor had called me back and i guess she didn't let, her, let tanya know that she had called so um anyway um thank you for hanging in i know this was a super super duper long one but just feel feel doing on everything yesterday that happened yesterday um yeah so love and care for all of us I send you love and care. Please have love and care in your life. And um, if you'd like to send any love and care my way, I would gladly, gladly, gladly accept. Um, and again, like this video will probably be like a few weeks out from when it's happening. But please keep me in your thoughts as I'm trying to think shrink. Please think shrink. We're trying to shrink things, the mass, my pancreas. Um, but um, I hope you're taking care. And I'll be talking to you real soon.